Hey, what is up people, Terrell here, and today I wanted to talk about five things I learned while I'm making my short horror film, It's Yellow Eyes. These are five filmmaking tips that I think could also apply to pretty much any type of video, and I wanted to share them, so let's get into it. So when I say like the script bake, what I basically mean is after you write your first draft, Take about a week or two and just push it off to the side. Don't read it, don't do anything with it. And this is because when you approach it that second time after the weeks have passed, you can look at it with fresh eyes and you can see a lot of parts that don't work. There were parts in It's Yellow Eyes that had like running puns, also these plots with the girlfriend and it really just made no sense at all. And thankfully I took a week to not read it because none of those parts actually ended up in the movie. So I recommend that after you write the first draft, put it to the side and you'll be good. So this is a step that seems like a no-brainer, but even I made the mistake of not fully planning out everything in this movie. I knew the opening scene and the ending climax would be the most difficult parts to pull off, so I put all my focus into those parts. When it came to things like the kitchen and the bedroom, I just kind of thought, hey, you know, um, pretty easy to film. I'll get to it when I get to it. Thank you, Lex Luthor. So when it came to those scenes, I really didn't even plan out what color scheme I wanted, the lighting, I had a basic idea of what camera angles I wanted. And once I started putting the video together, I started to realize it looked horrible. And so I actually reshot all the bedroom scenes and most of the kitchen scenes. And the second time around that I did this, I made sure to actually plan out what I wanted. And thankfully, since this was a small video, I actually had time to go back and reshoot. If this was a big production where I didn't have the ability to go back and reshoot stuff, I would be screwed. So moral of the story, kids, plan out everything and treat every scene with the same amount of love. I know talking scenes may not be as exciting as like the action scenes, but you still need to treat them the exact same way. When you're making movies on a low budget, it's pretty easy to arrive on set and then just start scratching all your camera angles and ideas out of the way because you realize that time and perhaps other obstacles are against you. With this one, I really wanted to try and stick to my vision and really let it come through. And I was actually successful if I just kind of stopped for a second, thought, okay, this is what I for sure want to go with and go through with it. And it it worked. I mean, the entire opening sequence of the film was exactly how I envisioned it in my head and how I wrote it down, and it was perfect. And the majority of the movie was actually exactly how I envisioned it. So when the going gets tough, actually just stay with it. Don't give up. If you have like certain camera angles or like a performance you want to come out a certain way, just try and stick with it, work with everybody, and try and make it happen. It is your vision. But now I'm going to contradict everything I just said and say that you should sometimes get away from your vision and kind of open yourself up to new opportunities. Days before we actually started shooting this, I was determined to have Luke's character wear the traditional red and white striped, you know, generic tracksuit from Adidas. But it was online for at the cheapest, like 70 bucks, which I didn't want to do. And I really was like, okay, this is my vision. I am not going to veer away from it. This is exactly what I want to do. So we went to Goodwill and we weren't exactly finding what I wanted. I was getting a little disappointed. But then we came across the windbreaker that you actually see him wear in the movie. And my instincts were telling me like, this is the one. Just the amount of like personality it had and it had this kind of like original look that I've never really seen before. I knew that this is something that I really wanted to use in the actual movie. So listen to your instinct people. If a new idea comes along and even if it's not your original vision, but you kind of get that gut feeling that it's a better option, go with it. Chances are your instinct is telling you the right thing and it will overall improve your movie. So one of the biggest lessons I learned when making this is that the more equipment you get to boost up the quality of your video, the more time you actually have to make setting up a scene. I never really experimented with lighting that much in my older videos, which actually after using lights, I don't know why I would ever actually think that. But you know, with all the different lights and having to switch out camera lenses, I started to find that filming scenes took about two times as long than I actually planned. And this resulted in me filming at like midnight and I was seriously on like the edge of just falling asleep. It was, 
I wanted to rip my hair out. It was horrible. So basically, it's as simple as the title. Mo equipment, mo problems. Lastly, and one of the biggest things I realized is that Foley is a must for all films. I dabbled in it a little bit with my older videos and I've always been quite fond of sound effects, but it was nothing like the scale that I did on this video. Every single sound you hear in my movie was captured days after the scene was actually shot. Luke and I spent an entire day capturing scenes like him tapping on the desk or the rustling of his windbreaker and the editing that followed that day was just longer and more exhausting than any other editing process throughout the entire movie but it is so worth it. I can't stress it enough. Just the clarity of the sound and the control of every single volume and sound direction of the sound effects is seriously just amazing. It, I, I mean, I can't see myself ever not doing Foley. It is that good. And the thing about Foley is that if you do a great job of it, no one really notices on the surface. But you know, when they go back to movies, you kinda, you know, if you get that unique sound, it kinda rings with people. Think of it like this. Think back to the Jurassic Park, the scene where the T-Rex comes after the children that are trapped in the car. When I think of that scene, I don't just think of the visuals of the T-Rex. I also think about the sound and Foley work in it. And I think about the sound work because it's just, it stays with you a little bit. You know, the sounds of the rain coming down on the car, the sounds of the leaves and trees thrashing through the rain as the T-Rex is approaching, and you know, the sounds of the wires when the T-Rex puts his fingers on it and pulls it down. Those are examples of great Foley work, and just think about your, you know, your favorite movies. I'm sure there's parts of sound in that that just kind of stay with you, and that is all just great Foley work. I think Foley is in some ways more important than actual visuals because just the sounds that, you know, it really just immerses you in the movie. So guys, that was it for this video. If you liked it, uh, like the video, subscribe, comment below. Uh, I think we might start doing this for all our other movies because... I tend to actually learn on each video production that I do, so I might as well share some of that advice with you guys. And uh, if you have not seen It's Yellow Eyes yet, uh, obviously you should go watch it. So this is Terrell from Lost Utopia Films giving you five things I learned on It's Yellow Eyes. Have a good day.